Hi guys! As you must have understood from the title and the thumbnail, yes, I got an offer from Amazon to work as SDE2, that is for L4 role. So in this video, I'll be sharing my interview experience with you guys. As interview experiences usually go, because I have signed the NDA, I cannot share the exact questions that were asked, but I'll share how many rounds I had, each round had which type of questions, what were the topics of the questions, and what was the difficulty level of the questions, and how was my personal experience, how did I do through the process. So let's get started. As usual, the first thing was that I was sent a coding assessment that I had to do online. So there were two medium level questions that could be done well within the time. And after that, there were two sections of 15-15 minutes, majorly behavioral questions like if you were in this situation, what would you choose or what is your more of a characteristic? I am honestly not sure what is that used for or how is that evaluated. I actually give this feedback to HR that I don't know what really happens by these two sections or how they are of any use in my process. So I gave that feedback. I don't know how is it evaluated or is it really even considered while giving you an offer or not. But I have never considered them so important. I think anyone who answers the questions will be able to clear them. So let's get into the more interesting and fun part that is the interviews. I had a total of four interviews, two DSA rounds, one HLD round and one LLD round. On the first day, both DSA rounds were scheduled together and since the feedback of those two rounds were positive, I was taken to the next two rounds. So let's start with the first DSA round. In the first interview, I was asked two medium level questions. The first question was based on two pointer technique and there was an extra vector required, but it was a very basic medium question that could be done well within time. And the second question was a very small tweak of BFS on binary tree. If you know BFS, you'll be able to do it fairly simply. Also in all the four Amazon rounds, I was asked behavioral type questions, basically tell me a time when you did this, tell me a time when you did that, or has this situation ever occurred with you to assess my values. Earlier, Amazon used to have separate behavioral rounds where they used to ask these type of questions and they used to assess the values of the candidate. Amazon has 14 values and I have heard stories when candidates are asked that uh, tell us about a time when you display this particular value. I did not have any specific behavioral round, but in all the four rounds that I had, I was asked a few behavioral questions. So 5-10 minutes went in all the rounds in that itself. So I won't be mentioning this in the rest of the three rounds. So coming back to the first round, after running code of both the questions and answering the behavioral questions, I was still left with enough time. So in that interviewer asked me follow up of the first question, which is actually a hard question. Interestingly, in one of my recent webinars, I actually talked about this follow up question and I told that this sounds like a very simple question, but it is actually a hard question which involves graph. So in the remaining time that we had, I talked about the solution of that question properly. Before coming to the second DSA round, let me tell you about the sponsor of the video. Coding Ninjas is one of the largest coding education companies and have taught around 50,000 students. It offers courses from basic to advanced level in programming in C++, Java, machine learning, web dev, Android development, and data science. They have exceptional content curated by experts from IIT, Stanford, Amazon, and Facebook. They have one is to one doubt resolving support and all the doubts usually get solved within one to two hours. They have 1000 plus questions asked in companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and there are more to practice. They have 4.9 star rating on Google and Facebook reviews. Their courses are very well structured for college students. And if students put right hard work and efforts, these courses will be enough to crack any tech job interview. Use the link in the description to avail 20% discount on all Coding Ninjas courses. Coming to the second DSA round, I had two interviews. One was the main interviewer and second one was shadowing him. So for those of you who don't know, in a few companies like Amazon, once you have some experience in the company and you want to start interviewing candidates, so to start your journey as an interviewer, you first start shadowing the interviews. So what will happen? There will be a main interviewer and you are the shadow interviewer. So you are not asking the main questions. You are there to just see the process and just to analyze that how candidate is doing. I think uh, shadow interviewer also gives feedback uh, and can also ask questions. But 
is not the main person in the interview but the shadow interviewer also asks follow up questions or if he or she has any doubts uh, he or she can stop you and ask any questions that he or she wants it basically depends on the main interviewer but yeah that happened with me coming to the questions i was asked two dsa questions the first question was a medium lead code question that i had already solved interestingly the first time i solved this question i missed a few edge cases so i did the question again after a few months and i was considering making a tutorial video but i did not so in the interview i obviously wrote code without any mistake very quickly and i handled all the edge cases very gracefully i think interviewers were surprised they didn't have my many questions to ask me after that coming to the second question before giving me the question itself interviewer mentioned that this is probably not as hard as the first question and i guess the interviewer realized that we are left with enough amount of time the interviewer had already asked me the behavioral questions as well so the interviewer did try to make it a bit hard the question could be solved very easily using bfs and i was able to tell it like immediately so to make it complex interviewer told me that you cannot use any extra space so don't use the cube so i came up with a recursive solution but initially in my recursive solution other than the recursive stack i was also using another data structure like immediately i couldn't think of this space optimization and interviewer was okay with it he told that you just write the recursive solution and once i wrote the recursive solution i realized that i actually do not need the extra space also and i was able to handle that and interviewer was very happy we were again done within 40 minutes or so coming to the third interview it was hld round It was not a question that I had heard of but it was fairly simple to handle. For HLD interviews I have actually made sort of a cheat sheet of questions that I should think of or I should ask the interviewer and I will share this sheet soon in coming videos. So I asked uh, correct questions and correct amount of time. I also talked about capacity and I took a lot of decisions based on that. I made the entire HLD diagram. but my interviewer was very particular about the diagram he made me make the arrows so making the arrows and all was a bit annoying but the interviewer seemed very particular about it so i did that properly and then i talked about the data flow we i told that we we should be using sql database and then there were questions like you know how are you going to handle scaling so i talked about how we can shard the database i also talked about the apis in detail like what how will the request look like how will the response look like and the interviewer was very particular about few things like he was like you haven't mentioned road balancer you haven't drawn it or what about logging and monitoring you haven't talked about the service of that how are you going to pass the data so i talked about everything in detail in the end i think interviewer was pretty happy we were done within time and i answered the behavioral questions as well coming to the fourth lld round again interestingly i have talked about the exact question on my channel i cannot mention it i cannot talk more about it uh, but i was able to do it very well i asked the right questions i made the diagram i talked about the pattern that can be used i wrote the apis i handled all the cases it went very well and we were done within 35 minutes and after that behavioral questions were asked and the interviewer did seem impressed uh, interview seemed happy with the solution so basically all my amazon interview rounds went really well like i wasn't even minutely doubtful after any of the rounds i was sure that i will get a positive feedback so because of which recruiter was really interested in hiring me i did have meetings with potential team members to understand the kind of work that i would be doing and i was really interested uh, in the work in one of the teams and i was impressed by other uh, work also so i was considering joining it but among the offers that i had i chose the other one now i will make a video where i will talk about all the factors that i thought about while uh, accepting a particular offer but one thing that was very different for amazon was that i am also a youtuber recently i have seen a lot of posts on linkedin where people make fun that if you want to join youtube you should first crack amazon or all amazon employees are thinking of joining a youtube channel so a lot of people told me that it would actually not be good for my channel to join amazon a lot of people even said that you know you will sell your soul you won't have any work life balance a lot of very casual comments which i think are wrong so for amazon i would like to say that a lot of my friends work at amazon and 
all of them are amazing developers some of them just blow my mind they are that good and also what i have noticed and i think most of you will agree that work life balance is highly dependent on the team some teams yes have very hectic work but some teams have very balanced work and this is true for all the companies earlier i think the ratio or the proportion of the teams that i had hectic work life was more but i think there is significant improvement now is what i have noticed from the feedback that i have heard obviously i am not working in amazon i have never worked at amazon so i cannot say for sure but i am making these statements based on what i have read what i have seen or based on the experiences of my friends or of the people i have talked to So while making a final decision of choosing among offers I did not want to consider this that you know it will be bad for my channel if if that is the reason why people unsubscribe then I am okay with it uh, this is not a reason why I did not choose Amazon I did consider among all the offers what was better for me I made the decision considering very sensible factors and considering what will work best for me so overall i have decided to not join amazon and as i said i will talk about the reasons separately in a video where i can compare that why i chose a company over the other one overall these are all great companies to work for and i am very grateful for having offers from companies like uber and amazon this is like something that i would have never imagined but i do feel proud that i did so well throughout the amazon interview process and i think it's sort of a validation if not for others at least for myself that yeah i am capable of guiding others for interview process and i think this channel is going in the right direction so for future videos please do stay tuned i hope you found the video helpful please do like share and subscribe it will mean so much to me thank you